Okay, Lotto says that a lot of artists are scared of touring because the internet hype doesn't really translate to ticket sales. She's absolutely right, 1,000%. See, when you see these festivals and these, you know, Rolling Loud, um, Coachella, there's like 150 artists on that bill. And there's like set up in different stages. So when you go to these events and these festivals, these fans are paying like $350 for the ticket. But they get to see like 60, 70 artists. All these fans, they're not there for you. They probably know probably your biggest hit record, and that's about it. Like I I feel like even 6ix9ine, the reason why he stopped really touring and really stopped doing shows is because he had a show in Texas where they had empty seats. The last thing these artists want is for somebody to go in, record the venue, see all the empty seats, and see you performing, and it shows that, oh, you not as big as you not as popping as you thought. It's embarrassing and it's like an ego killer. Like no artist wants to go through that. I think there was a situation with Meek, like I think it was a, maybe, I think it was last year or maybe two years ago, when he was putting out his album, and he was trying to sell out MSG, like Madison Square Garden. Even with the stage, like they still hold, you know, thirteen, fourteen thousand plus. And what his label ended up doing. They had to start giving out free tickets because they didn't want the place to be empty. So people were saying, if you were in Manhattan that day, downtown, you was getting flyers and you was getting handed free tickets. Like, come see Meek, come see Meek. So I think it was Meek and Friends. I think it was, I think the flyer was Meek and Friends. And he was going to bring out a couple people and they just couldn't sell out all the tickets. They, I mean, it's, I mean, it happens. It happens to everybody. Because Meek at that time wasn't as hot as he was when he first came out of jail. So, I mean, that... Around that time, he was on fire. I mean, he had, you know, going bad. He had the Drake verse. Drake gave him the verse, the hook. He rapped first, and he had the video. Like, that's the full-on package right there. If you get all four of those, like, that's a smash record. for his pre He didn't have that same situation for his previous album, so. Lotto was right. You know, I'd rather be in front of, you know, one to 3,000 people that know my whole entire catalog than in front of, you know, 100,000 people who they probably only know, you know, one or two songs. You see where Jack Harlow came from to where he is now? Like, I think he even had, like, there was a picture of a fan that was rocking with Jack when there was, like, eight, nine people in the crowd. And then when he was filling up with, like, two, three thousand, that same fan was still there. And it was just funny to see that, you know, that growth and to see the, you know, the maturation process. And now you see Jack now, I mean, he's on fire. You just seen him out in Turks and Caicos with Drake. You just seen him put out, you know, nail tech. I mean, his career is going that way. But yeah, man, that's my take on this conversation, man. Like if you want to. Comment if you want to. Subscribe if you want to. If not, life goes on.